On growth and form was even more than this. Flitting casually between ancient Greek and Latin, German, Italian and French, it laid out its case in prose so elegant and gorgeous that the eminent biologist Peter Medawar was later inspired to call it, beyond comparison, the finest work of literature in all the annals of science that have been recorded in the English tongue. It's a work that exudes scholarship on every page, revealing Darcy Thompson as one of the last true polymaths. He felt that there was knowledge not just in the latest science, but in the works of Plato and Aristotle. And like Plato, he believed in general, overarching principles that might help us understand the world, principles embodied in maths and geometry, which could carry us beyond a minute cataloguing of particulars. Classics and natural history were Darcy's first loves, passions he inherited from his father, a professor of Greek in Ireland. Born in 1860, Darcy was raised in Edinburgh by his aunt, his mother having died a week after his birth. He went to Edinburgh University to study medicine, but it was really zoology and botany that drew him, and he transferred to Cambridge, then the only university to offer biology as a distinct subject. He supported himself there partly by teaching Greek. He was something of an academic loner, and he was disappointed when he failed to get a fellowship at Cambridge. Instead, he went back to Scotland, taking a post at the new University of Dundee, where he focused on marine biology. I confess that I find Darcy Thompson something of an enigma, in that I still struggle to see, if, if you like, where he came from. How did he get to this extraordinary synthesis of mathematics and biology and physics and, and even chemistry from being, a, in some ways, what seemed like a humble marine biologist at a, a new university in Scotland? What was it you think about the man himself that led him to these ideas? I think there are a number of things. One really important one is his great love of the classics. And we know that his father was a classics lecturer and then became a professor of Greek. And he very much instilled in the young Darcy a great love of particularly Aristotle. Aristotle, of course, Darcy saw as really the first great biologist. And so he comes from that background of really being one of the last great polymaths, of course, at the very time that science is becoming more and more specialist. 